Twilight had its own craze of a love triangle about a werewolf and Bigfoot or do you know why you have those thoughts about life? You experience life in a lot of different ways. Uh, it can form your opinion on politics, romantic relationships, friendships, morals, and essentially everything that comes with being a human. You weren't strolling out of the womb just with those beliefs, but instead your environment growing up either helped you embrace those thoughts or pushed them away for something else you probably felt was more you. You'll always be exposed to different ideas and beliefs every time you step out of your place or I guess when you're on the phone too, sometimes without you even realizing. That's what makes art so impactful for you. The music you listen to or those YouTubers you watch at the comfort of your home or for some people like me, movies can impact you. You probably hear generalizations about what each generation acts like. Gen Xers have those movies and so do millennials. How about the Gen Z crowd? You that's possibly Gen Z themselves, or knows someone that is, wonders what movies portray Gen Z. Yes, this list will have some popular movies that you have heard of, but this isn't a list of the best movies of Gen Z era. This is what movies define Gen Z. I'm talking about philosophical, moral, intellectual, and even spiritual relevance that can show what movies I believe represent uh, Generation Z. So let's start with, well, She's married to the Muffin Man. The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man! What I noticed looking back on our movies is that a lot of these are franchise movies. So I guess we're the franchise generation, basically. I guess I shouldn't be too shocked, but the more we go through this list, the sadder I feel about the lack of one and done classics instead of franchise cash grabs. But even though a lot of these will be popular cash grabs and popular franchises, I mean to say, it's always the original movie that turned us into fans in the very first place. So I I would first go with Shrek. I say Shrek because even though it came out in 2001, a lot of Gen Z's philosophy and mindset are shown from this movie. One thing it had was a main character like Shrek that had an unconventional appearance and a very rough demeanor and pretty much flipping on its head a status quo we saw from romance movies before that would have the giga chat, you know what I mean? Like the Prince Charming stereotype. But the film instead starts a conversation about not needing arbitrary beauty standards established in society to determine what is attractive and worthy of love. For a generation that values individuality and diversity, it makes sense to put Shrek in the list for one of the most influential of our generation. <laughs> Oh, oh, show him the cat. Who's the, the cat? King oh. of New York City. Alex, Alex the Lion. <sighs> DreamWorks ran it back with another banger called Madagascar. This film got me introduced to some interesting actors like Bob Saget, I hope I'm saying his name right, I think it's Bob Saget, Ben Stiller, and comedian Chris Rock. Madagascar is one of those films that I can just turn on and never get bored watching. And I meant to say this for Shrek, but Madagascar had some catchy songs on it like that. I like to move it, move it. It might not be as expressive of a film that represents Gen Z, but you have to understand. The reason why I have it here is because it was an early film in our time about a coming of age story where creatures connected from a certain environment and growing as a family without being connected through blood. Madagascar really shows how friends can even be more of a family than your own flesh and blood. For Gen Z, in my opinion, shows this is more of a norm instead of an anomaly. Man, this entire section alone could be an entire video because these films right here have everything that you need to be remembered for decades. They have the banging soundtracks, layered emotional storytelling about like family, self-identity, self-confidence, living with old age, consumerism, capitalism, the desire of wanting uh, convenience at all costs, and wrapping up the era with a banger called Toy Story 3. I saw this on a Reddit page, uh, someone explaining this era, and I agree with their sentiment when they said this, right? Check it out. The name sounds like it's suggesting that these are the best Pixar movies, but that's not entirely what I meant by it. I meant that these films were the first time that Pixar relished in creativity and passion for project storytelling. I see the golden age as a time where they threw caution to the wind and made what they wanted to, how they wanted it to be. The films are The Incredibles, Cars, Ratatouille, Wall-E, Up, 
and Toy Story 3. These films are more complex and tackle heavier themes than anything in the classic era, such as midlife crisis, environmentalism, grief, passion, self-worth, identity, etc. This is when Pixar really became known as that studio that will make you cry. Now look, honestly, The Lion King is my favorite movie of all time, and it will always be the reason that sparked my interest in movies. But Pixar's golden age is what shaped my mind, at least, on so many heavy topics in a very entertaining manner that inspired me to analyze movies instead of just consuming it. I feel like these are the films that didn't dumb down their message to us Gen Zers when we were younger. It's just that when we were younger, some themes probably weren't uh, recognized due to our lack of exposure to the outside world. But now when you go back as an adult and look at it through, the, through that type of lens, it feels like a new experience from a different angle now. So it keeps it feeling refreshing. Again, there's so much to discuss, but that might be a video for another time. Now, I'll be honest with y'all, the only Hunger Games movies I saw were the prequel that came out, Songbirds and Snakes, and the original Hunger Games. Hunger Games is one of those franchises, or really one of those movies, where luck and opportunity were perfectly aligned when it dropped. Because you have to understand, if it came earlier or later, I don't think it would have had the same success. Because a lot of us in middle school or early high school were, were like extremely obsessed with young adult movies. I mean, Twilight had its own craze of a love triangle about a werewolf and Bigfoot or a vampire. I, I never I never really dove into Twilight, but best believe Twilight and the Hunger Games were one of those movies that even if a person who never saw it, they definitely heard about it a lot. Now, for anyone who is Generation Alpha, which is the generation after us Gen Zers, these years for us Gen Zers were like frozen when that song Let It Go came out. And for the Gen Xers, I guess it would have the same impact as Star Wars New Hope. I don't know. I wasn't there when it came out, so I, that might be the wrong comparison. But if you're someone who probably knows a better comparison, definitely let me know down in the comment section what you think might be better. Hunger Games was our film that explored a dynamic of social injustice early on in our age and the drive of seeking empowerment for the less fortunate and a movement for social change when you believe that something happening in society just isn't right. Twilight really highlighted my generation's love for fantasy by combining it with romance. So that was, in our. I remember this time period, it was so intense that there were people saying that they were either Team Edward or Team Clark or Team something. I don't know. Again, most of these conversations, I was not in there voluntarily. Not gonna lie, looking at the list of movies that possibly define our generation is pretty depressing. But no wonder our sense of humor is so dark because Joker came out in a period where a lot of us were in college and away from home for the first time. And during this time, a lot of us had to deal with many aspects of life without seeing our parents for months at a time, right? So for a lot of Gen Zers, mental health became an increase of importance with different severity levels. And for many Gen Zers, it felt like their parents and society couldn't grasp the concept or provide relief for people like that with mental health issues, right? Uh, so when Joker came out, it was a sleeper hit. Mind you, this film had like, what, a $55 million budget, but it grossed over a billion dollars in the box office. And this film had everything that many college students at this time felt. We felt economic and social abandonment, the desire to revolt against higher income individuals and corporations that took advantage of people who were struggling. And that's what I believe Gen Z connect, uh, felt connected to this film. And it was that really and the bathroom scene. Let's talk about something bright, okay? Because I know it's, got, it's been a little sad for a little bit, but let's talk about the, the SpongeBob movie, okay? I'm not a typical bald, 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 my eyes! Now, it's on the list because the list of memes from this movie and even the TV show alone has to be put as a staple in Gen Z. It will be terrible for me not to have this included at all in the list of movies right now if you want to understand the sense of humor that gen z has pretty much developed while we are in our youth time this movie in the tv show i recommend watching the movie was just a show but extended for like an extra hour and a half 
and it had this ridiculous humor. It had this entertaining plot of SpongeBob pretty much doing his inner Percy Jackson, having to retrieve something from a sea god. And of course, the classic banger known as I'm a Goofy Goober! John Wick is this generation's Rambo, and there's no point of saying otherwise. I already struck my son. And may I ask why? Because he stole John Wick's car, sir, and uh, killed his dog. Oh. You might not think so in the first movie. Once you see two through four, you'll see what I mean. John Wick is a grounded action fantasy. And I say fantasy because this man has fell from so many heights, this man should be dead already. But he's not. John Wick represents a lone individual in a society, right? Or even the underbelly of danger that surrounds him. So John Wick serves the appetite that older Gen Zers like myself started to crave in the midst of a lot of these, a lot of our favorite films coming back as like sequels and turning into franchises and cash grabs and everything like that. It felt good seeing John Wick as a refreshing action film that had creative enough action sequences to keep you engaged and it was memeable too, because people kept going on and on about John Wick's dog dying, basically. And that's why he went on a killing spree. And John Wick has spawned many copycats seeking to capture the audiences looking for those realistic fights with the protagonist getting injured but still getting the job done. If you don't know what I'm talking about, any action movie post John Wick, you'll be surprised. Even though John Wick itself became a franchise, it's an action franchise that, in my opinion, change the action fighting genre for years to come. Wingardium Leviosa. Stop, stop, stop. I hope y'all know there's so many movies I'm putting in here that I just had to trim a lot of stuff short, but if y'all ever want a part two, definitely let me know because there's so many more movies we could probably discuss. But anyway, I know many older Gen Z people will probably say the Lord of the Rings trilogy was their first introduction to fantasy, but I personally think that was more of a millennial thing. Um, I think Harry Potter introduced us Gen Zers to a fantasy genre that could be embraced for its more fantastical nature instead of trying to make all these fantasy movies grounded. So because I guess Hollywood believes that fantasy movies and audiences can't comprehend being in another world. And that was like a thing for a little bit. And I just felt like, I don't know. Like, well, I'm not stupid, okay? I, I I can understand you're in a new world. I saw Dune. If you can understand Dune, uh, I'm probably, let me not say that. If you can understand Harry Potter, you can understand other fantasy movies. That's all I wanted to say. Now, Generation Z grew up alongside the three trio in the Harry Potter group, and we formed a deep connection with the characters in the broader Wizarding World itself. And ever since the last Harry Potter film came out, it took a while before more blockbuster fantasy films to really come and scratch that itch that the genre definitely needs. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. I know y'all are waiting for this one to come up because it's the MCU. I mean, how could I not have it on the list of influential Gen Z franchises, movies, etc. right? So now we already know why the MCU is popular. It had this unprecedented scale. It had interconnected storytelling and superheroes that have become these cultural symbols. It was such a good franchise that it, it turned a lot of actors into pop culture fame and was the place for actors to get a second chance of acting before moving on to other projects like Robert Downey Jr., for example. But I specifically want to focus on Avengers 1, Civil War, and Avengers Endgame. Now, again, this could be its own video essay itself because these three movies were basically an arc itself. Avengers 1 would be the first act, introducing the characters, world, tone, etc. And Civil War would be the second act where we are expanding on the lore and going through the consequences of our actions and wrapping it up with Avengers Endgame as the final act where we reflect on the lessons we learned on this adventure with the group. Uh, with the group. People might argue that this might not necessarily be a Gen Z piece because demographics of all ages. My counterpoint is, the MCU reflects the consistent themes we've seen in our generation, such as finding family within strangers when our own family doesn't want us or refuses to understand us, especially if we're different than what society believes is normal. Ah! Where are they? It's 
not the Joker. It's a birthday clown. This is when edgy superhero movies became a thing. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying the Batman trilogy was edgy, but this pretty much spawned those overly serious comic book movies from a particular director slash universe that I will not name. I do want to say that even though I enjoyed those type of films, it also felt like the film taste changed as well for us. After The Dark Knight, it seems we wanted comic book movies to have some type of prestige level of quality to them, and or at least darker tones in order to be seen as realistic among the general audience. In reality, all people care about is if the story is good. Just because a film has a dark aesthetic doesn't mean the quality of the film will be better than a colorful and vibrant film. But I'm getting off topic anyway. So Gen Z is the era that didn't want to conform to the status quo. So a film that provided a character in a more crime, uh, crime drama setting and a moral ambig uh, ambiguity led to it taking off among Gen Zers. Uh, the film explores societal issues, ethical dilemmas, psychological struggles among Batman and Joker, and even the city itself of Gotham. You don't need me to dive any deep or how complex or how great the film is. There's hundreds and I mean hundreds of video essays that go way more in depth. Just know that this trilogy is what, in my opinion, sparked the edgy comic book era that we kind of are slowly getting out of now. He took my girl away. Who are you? Where are the Avengers, man? You're the ones Thor told us about. You know Thor? Yeah, tall guy, not that good looking. Needed. If you weren't in the theater opening night at the top of your lungs when Toby and Andrew showed up, you either fell asleep during that portion, or you passed out seeing the rumors came true. It's either one of those two options. The film brought together multiple Spider-Man iterations, okay? And it was pretty much in an okay to solid movie, you know? Some people will say it's, it's trash now, but I think it's a solid movie. Um, the film explored themes like identity, sacrifice, the consequences of choices, which felt like a prologue trilogy for Tom Holland's Spider-Man character. And it felt rewarding for us Gen Zers to watch all of Spider-Man's movies and have it wrapped up in No Way Home. Especially for many of us who our first interaction with Spider-Man was Sam Raimi's version, which is a Tony McGuire version. So it felt like a childhood payoff that showed how far we came with Spider-Man uh, mythos. And I don't wanna go on and on about it since there's a ton of essays on it, but I would say that this was its own era, the Peter Parker era. I feel like now we're in the Miles Morales era and I couldn't be more happy for Miles to get that love and flowers that he definitely deserves. Gen Zers at a young age became politically aware and involved due to their experiences and perspectives of society. Especially when glued into social media where you can get news the second it happens, a topic that many people discuss, in America at least, are race, class, and privilege from different angles, right? And Get Out came out during those high tension moments, and it provided a unique twist in the horror genre and even a debut for Jordan Peele. And the film tackled what many Gen Z Black people discuss, which is racism and cultural appropriation, and the lengths a group of people might go in order to fulfill their own desires. It's definitely a film of our generation, and it sparks conversations about systemic racism, microaggressions, and treating black bodies as commodities for the benefit of a different demographic. I know y'all are wondering if there are any indie Gen Z movies, and there are, but it's hard to find like an indie that balances between having a message that relates to Gen Z, but known wide enough to represent the thoughts of my generation. And Her is one of those films you should watch at least once in your lifetime. It's a thought-provoking message about the comfort and reliance on technology to numb yourself to the world, something that my generation experiences right now, in fact. It lays heavy into the negative effects of technology for humans, which means it has increased rates of loneliness, cynicism, and lack of authenticity. It's definitely a film I highly recommend if you like uh, Joaquin Phoenix. He killed it as Joker, and he does well in this movie, too. What? Is the truth? Nothing matters. And lastly, a movie that caught my attention two years ago that struck a chord in me about 30 minutes into the movie, uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. It's one of those experimental films I'm glad caught a wider crowd. Now, I saw this movie like two months while it was still in theaters, but two months like after it aired. 
And the movie itself has a very unique taste depending on the demographic, but we can't ignore the message it discusses though. This one might be debatable depending on how you view the film. By that I mean, you can successfully argue it is a millennial film rather than a Gen Z one. It does discuss a key phase a lot of millennials will experience in their life right now, which is the midlife crisis. You kind of hit a realization about your life and how different you once envisioned it, causing you to spiral in different ways. But I believe Gen Zers can also see themselves in the movie, in particular with the antagonist of the movie, Stephanie Sue. I hope I'm getting your name right. So this is about a young woman who grows up in a cruel dark world and sees it to themselves to reset this world because in her eyes, nothing truly matters in this life. And especially if there are infinite versions of her, right? Because this is a multiversal type of story. And I feel for many Gen Zers, it's a mindset common because of the world we live in with back to back to back catastrophes that left us jaded about our world at a younger age than other generations probably would have been exposed to. And Gen Z saw a nationwide pandemic over 9-11. In America, there was a mortgage crisis in 2008, and then you had the pandemic in 2020. And being so well informed about the state of society has also led to cynicism of our own reality. It's the same as Stephanie Sue's character. Once she saw the multiverse, she also became jaded towards her perspective of reality. It's definitely one of those movies that does a great job taking a subject matter we heard so many times before, but it's putting it in a different setting so it's seen as fresh. Definitely recommend you giving it a shot. I'm sure I missed other movies you guys felt were important or even more important than the ones I mentioned, but leave them below, okay? Because I would like to know your thought process as well on what movies represent Generation Z. Anyway, I'm out. Peace.